<laughs> As a kid, I was terrified to go to school. What terrified me were the breaks. The bell would ring, signaling our 15 minutes of free time, and the kids would rush out in groups of two or three or four to be together, to have fun, to play. Now, I never found myself in one of these groups. Instead, for me, the breaks meant wandering around alone on the playground, most, mostly for myself. I really wanted to join one of these groups, but for some reason, I did not seem to fit in. One day, I must have been 12 years old, one of the schoolboys came up to me, and he drew a circle around me on the playground with chalk, and then took a step back, pointed at the circle, and said, look, Fabian, all of your friends are inside of this circle. They all laughed, but I didn't. At home, things went much different. My father and my brother loved watching football games together, but I had no interest in that for some reason. My sister and my brother wanted to listen to music on their Walkman. And if there's any millennials here, that is like 20 years ago, we used it as mobile, mobile music players. They wanted to listen to music on the Walkman. I was the kid in the basement, taking the Walkman into its different pieces and reading the manual, understanding how it works. Um, I wanted to play the guitar, but when my father came home, he just wanted the house to be quiet. I didn't really seem to be able to connect to any circles in school, and for some strange reason, at home, it wasn't that much different. And I had no idea why. One day I came home, and my mom and dad sat me down in the living room with something clearly heavy on their mind. And my mom looked at me and said, Fabian, we have to tell you something. Your father, and my father was just sitting here next to me. Your father, my mother said, is not your real biological father. WTF, I thought. <laughs> Suddenly, I found myself in another reality. Suddenly, I was in a Mexican telenovela. Just that mine was not called Yo Soy Tu Madre. It was, <laughs> it was El No Es Tu Padre. <laughs> Suddenly, this idea of this closed circle that my family was supposed to be had an opening a mysterious father figure that I tucked away in the back of my mind. And from that moment on, my life changed dramatically. I started breaking rules, sneaking out of the basement, coming home late whenever I wanted to, basically living in defiance of the rules that my stepfather had set up for me and my mother too. And I can't say my family thought that's a happy development, but for me, it was taking the first important steps of freeing myself, of expanding my circle. When I was 20, I moved to Cologne with my best friend, Ol, at that time, to study computer science. That's the only picture I could find from that time, sorry. And we didn't know anyone in Cologne, and we had no money, neither. So for us, it meant we would buy beer in the supermarket and then hang out on the streets, creating fun, spontaneous moments. And there in Cologne, I would quickly discover a new hobby, which is ultimately the reason I'm standing here today. Uh, connecting and talking with and two strangers. We would just hang out in the streets, and everyone who would just walk from A to B, which we thought of, that's the normal people. We are this, we're strange. They went from the bar to, I don't know, to, to home, or from the home to the head. We would pull them into our circle and play songs, and all would rap, and try to stick, have them stick around. You know? Parks were especially great p uh, places, because it was full of different circuits, and I loved mingling between all these different circuits and even connecting them with each other. Like if one needed rolling papers or a lighter to fire up the barbecue, then I knew someone in that circle, and I would connect them with each other, and sometimes we would hang out all together, kind of an inter-circle interchange. Now at that time, you know, it, it's cool. These circuits were exclusive, threatening places that I felt I, want, I didn't belong to. But here I learned if I put down my guard and I approach people with an open heart and without suspicion and uh, without judgment, then they would actually welcome me in. At that time, I knew I really wanted to expand my circle even more and go travel, but I had no money. The thing is, when I was hanging out here, I got invited for barbecues and drinks the whole week weekend. So I decided to cancel my flat and live on the streets for two months as a homeless person, basically. And that's what I did, guitar in hand, exchanging connections for songs and jokes and free, free food and barbecues. And with the money I saved, I traveled. I went to Thailand and I expanded the circuits even more. And I then spent a year working for a startup in Chile and another year in Spain. And there I continued to enjoy hanging, outside, hanging out outside and, and talking to everyone. 
Now, during all this time, I didn't really think about my father too much. So it came with a real shock. When my mom called me and said, Fabian, your father died. Which one? <laughs> and it was my biological father, the one I had not been thinking about. And I only knew so little about him. He was a colonel at World War II fighting on the Russian front. Like, what's up with TEDx Montenegro? You all get these kind of Germans here on stage. <laughs> and, and after, when the war was done, he became a priest in the village where he met my mother. They had a 30-year-old age difference when they met and started a seven-year-long secret love relationship while both of them were married to other people. Again, telenovela, right? I knew it was really important for me to go to his funeral. And so the day came. It was a cold winter day. And I walked through the snow to the church. And I was full of fear and anxiety. Because you see, at this funeral, there were his other family members, three of his children, my three half siblings. And they did not know that I even existed. So I just walked past by them, did not make any eye contact, and sat down on the last bench in the church. And then the funeral speech started. It was strange there. In this context, on the funeral of my own biological father, I couldn't show myself. I was on the outsides again. And the funeral speech started, and he was a brave person, a bold person, never afraid to put himself out there and never afraid to make connections. So much that was said about him resonated with myself. And I tried hard not to cry, so that when the funeral speech was over, I just ran out of the church and sat down in a little forest behind the church, and I cried like I'd never cried before. See, when I learned that my father was not my real father when I was 14, it freed me from the burden of not understanding why I wasn't really able to connect at school or at home. And here I was having a real connection with my real father, while at the same time I had to goodbye to him. And while they lowered the coffin with my father's body into the earth and put him to rest, I kind of put to rest the question of who he was. And I turned instead to the question of who I was in this life. Now, we have a saying in Germany, it comes from a song. It goes like, you're crazy, my child. You have to go to Berlin. And so not knowing what to do and feeling a bit lost, I moved to Berlin. And I enrolled in a master's program. And one day, I was cycling back from university. I passed by a Hyatt hotel. And I took a peek through the window. And I saw this Hyatt hotel was hosting a conference about Ruby on Rails, which is the programming language. I didn't know not much about it. But there was something inside going on which I knew a lot about. There was an amazing looking, tasty buffet. And you know, my stepfather forced us children to mix the orange juice with water because we had to save. So whenever there's free food, I'm there. You know, why do you think I'm come to TEDx? But <laughs> <laughs> so I pretended I wasn't one of the participants and snuck in. And I went straight to the most expensive looking food, free salmon. So I was piling up the salmon on my plate while a recruiter standing next to me asked me if I had experience with Ruby and Rails. And I was like, yeah, you know, I'm getting into it at the moment. I lied. But you know, first pretending and then actually knowing it, I got this conversation got me a job. See, what's funny is that in Cologne, I made free food from connections. And now I was getting connections from free food. But most importantly, I learned that taking risks by diving into the unknown is the fuel for opportunity. The next such dive into the unknown came two months later when I walked out of the office. And I saw a long-haired guy playing guitar on the other side of the street. And I went up there and struck up a conversation. And he told me an amazing story how he bought cars in Spain and drove them down to Gambia and Africa and sold them for three times the price. And he did that for four years with different cars. And I thought, wow, this is an amazing idea. And again, adventure called. So I quit the job. And I bought myself an old Mercedes. And I started my trip through Africa, which would forever change the course of my life. During this trip, I met smugglers and refugees and kings. And I sucked in their stories like a dry sponge. I just wanted to hear more and more from more diverse people. And what's fascinating to me was connecting to those people on the fringes of humanity, so to speak, was just not any different than connecting to people in Cologne 
I had just to put my guard down and to not care about what circuits they were supposed to be in and what circuits I was supposed to be in. And then we just had a human connection. After driving through 14 countries there for a whole year, I thought I had gained a new superpower. I was now circuit connection man, ready to connect to anyone on this planet. And I was ready for something new. Now this something new came, of course, when I contracted malaria in Congo. I was, uh, my hands were shaking so much I couldn't use a key and put it in the lock. Um, but I was lucky. While there was fever chills in bed, I had Wi-Fi. And so I did random Googling just to keep my mind busy and not lose my mind. And one day I was seriously not looking for a job at all. I put this into Google just to see what I might be doing in one year. And long story short, that, com that random Googling got me a job. I was hired as a consultant for a fast-growing startup in London. And so I cut my hair and my beard and put on different clothes. And, and I flew to London. And there I was on the first day in the office. And my boss would walk me around and show me around and present me to my future colleagues. And there I was, Circle Connection Man, ready to connect to anyone, right? Well, no. I had no more, no more malaria, but my hands were shaking again because I was nervous. For me, my future colleagues were like these kids on the playground that didn't welcome me into the circles. You see, it's easy to connect to people when you're traveling for a day or a couple of weeks with the same people, you know? But with them, I knew I would see them for five days a week, maybe for a couple of years. And I thought, sooner or later, they will find out that I'm weird and that I do not belong there, except that's not what happened. My boss one day took me to the site and said, we knew you were a little bit different. That's why we hired you. They wanted me there. They appreciated me for exactly who I was. And that imp impacted me more profoundly than anything I had described here. It was making a full circle. And you know, my circumstances, not identifying with one circle in particular too much, was what made this possible, this, all this traveling. And solving problems in a creative way in Africa is just what you need as a skill in the startup world. So it was amazingly valuable skills that I picked up there. Anyway, after a year and a half, I thought, done with the hectic London business world, and I founded my own company. And I employed the first person, Dominic, and he moved into my living room. And we started working really hard, and we had success. We made money. But somehow sitting there felt like, eh, this is like a movie I already know the end of. More money, bigger office, more employees. It wouldn't make me any happier. There has to be an adventurous way of running a company, and yes, there was. Together with another friend, Vin, we bought this Land Rover Defender, which is parked outside here now. And we started driving from Argentina to Colombia for a whole year with the mission to run our company from this car while delivering our services to clients like Goldman Sachs and Virgin Atlantic and Microsoft from remote places like the Chilean desert and uh, Peruvian beaches and Ecuadorian jungles. And we called ourselves a nomad company. And Wired magazine picked up the story and called it the world's first nomad company. And suddenly, we had, were in dozens of interviews and blogs and um, podcasts. And suddenly, event organizers invited me to give talks about the future of work. It was quite a wild ride. And here I am today. You know, let's bring this whole thing full circle. And the pun is intended here. We all want to belong to some circles because it gives us a certain sense of comfort. But my experience taught me that we have to watch out that we don't identify with a particular circle too much because it limits us. It limits us to let in all this awesome diversity and the opportunities this, that this world has to offer. If you don't identify with a particular circle, you can be part of many at the same time. And if you do that, you go out there, and you meet a bunch of people, then you realize it's really hard to not include people in your circle if they have opened the doors for you, have made you feel welcome and at home at their place, if they have pulled you out of the mud when you were stuck. And it's really hard to not care for people or call them friends when you have made music together and danced and laughed together. And when you do that over and over again, then it's really hard not to come to the conclusion that beyond all this superficial differences that we might see and beyond what people think, which circle they belong to, there lies a common humanity and that we're so much more alike than we're different. 
Like this guy in Gama summed it up. When he put his arm against mine, he said, if you cut into my arm and you cut into yours, what's the color of our blood? So maybe next time when you're out there waiting for a bus at a public square, then try to challenge yourself. Strike up a conversation with someone, maybe someone who's very different from you, maybe someone who seems to be left out and needs a smile. Repeat that exercise, and I promise you that the perception you have of the world will change in amazing ways, and that if you open your circles, then amazing opportunities will present themselves to you. So thank you for opening your circles to me today. Thank you. Thank you.